Okay, let's do this. And good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Welcome to my channel. I'm Pierre. And we are going to start off by going over to the computer and looking at what we did yesterday to get to, oh, wait a minute, where is that painting? It's not there. Ah, there it is on the floor. So we are going to just very look at a quick recap to see how come that painting ended up on the floor. Well, it's very simple. We started off our day by masking that centerpiece with some newspapers. We did both edges, the left and the right. We brought the canvas on the ground and then we did the splattering to give some special effects to the background. So that's basically what we did all afternoon. Now, obviously we had to wait for the painting to dry as we took off the protective newspapers. So what are we going to do today? Well, I think the first thing we're going to do is get this painting off the floor, put it back on the wall so I don't uh, walk all over it. So I'm going to do that right now. So I'm just going to go over here and grab my staple gun. And let's grab a corner right here. There we go. Corner of the painting. And I'll bring this up. right up here. I'm going to use the same markers that we used before like that I know will be nice and straight. Let me pull this up here. Just put a little pressure on that. Make sure it's nice and straight. I am going to step back just to check it out. Look on the edges, make sure they're nice and vertical. And yes, I can uh, assume that it is straight. So let's just, just add a little more staples. There we go. And there we, oops, that one we go in. I said hit a hard spot on the wall. And I am going to step back again, take a look at the painting from. Okay. Very good. Yep. Yeah. Okay, so that's cool. Looks like apparently somebody already stepped on the canvas a little bit. Fortunately, it was in an area where it really didn't matter. Anyways, wherever the splattering did spill over, we're going to put a little bit of white paint on that as well. And we are going to tackle today's job. So I've been having a hard time uh, deciding what to do on, on this painting. I must admit that usually it comes to me fairly easily. But uh, this time I have a, had a hard time deciding and I'm still not quite convinced of what I'm going to do here in the centerpiece. I know that I'm going to do some leaves and some plants around there. But the centerpiece I'm not sure. And the reason why I've had such a hard time is because uh, for the last 30 years, all my people that are in my paintings all have masks on. Now we're living in a world where we have to wear masks. So that was a warning that I gave 30, even longer. I first did my first gas mask, I think in 1984, if I'm not uh, mistaken. So it's been quite a while. And then uh, in the mid early 80s, I did some concerts to save the rainforest. Stop cutting the wood of the rainforest. And then I did paintings. Well, let's, let's, I'm just going to take my camera and show you right around my studio. Okay. I did a, a mural and on my mural, you can see right here that I have these guys working 
on the chain. I have the armament where I'm criticizing. I'm criticizing the exploitation of women in sex games. Up here I have uh, criticizing again nuclear power, pollution. So I've been using painting these themes for so many years. And to what avail? Almost no avail at all. Up here I've been painting a judge. You know, those guys that hold life and death in their hands. And with what's going on in the Supreme Court right now, well, that's kind of uh, in the news today. You know, the judge on top of the guillotine. And then up here in the balcony, what do we have? We have like, you know, the capitalists, the military, the aristocrats. You know, I've been painting all these subjects just for years. And if you look at the back of my door, well, here is an ode to the workers, you know, people working in the fields. Here, let me just show you that. I hope you can see it like that. I'll just move camera number one over and just push my door like that. And here you can see farmers working in the fields, yet... Uh, as though they were in prison camps because they have no control over the prices for selling their goods. So anyways, all this, why? Why am I showing you all this? Well, basically to say that I've touched about almost every subject thinkable that you can think of. You know, I've made several paintings on the absurdity of religions, organized religions how I was against them. I myself am a Zen Buddhist, so I'm more or less an atheist. And uh, I believe that organized religions uh, are, you know, they perpetrated so much misery throughout the ages, wars. And it's still the case, you know, when you look at that uh, French teacher that was decapitated by an extremist last week, that also is uh, in the news. So... I keep saying to myself, why, what, what, what do I paint next that's going to have some sort of an impact or what's going to make me feel better, happier? And to be honest, I haven't found the answer yet. I'm so disturbed by everything that's going on in the world that uh, sometimes I, uh, I just kind of blank out. So anyways, I'm going to go and start painting, stop preaching or rapping or talking about God knows what especially when I see that my camera is offline and we don't have a camera here. Wonderful. So I'll go back to camera number one. Apparently my other camera bugged out on me as I was showing you around the, around the studio. So now we're back online. That's very good. And okay, both cameras are working. So Anyways, another reason why I'm upset, even my cameras don't want to uh, cooperate. So, today I am going to start my plants. I'm going to stop rambling on. I'm going to start off with white paint, just because I want the colors to be nice and vibrant. So, I'm going to start by picking up a paintbrush. I'm not exactly sure which one I'm going to use yet. Maybe something like this. Okay. So, that paint. I'm going to grab some white paint. So I'm not sure how much of uh, my studio I just showed you or not showed you because I was having problems, but you know what? I'm going to be kind of stubborn, and I'm going to grab my camera here, number one camera, which isn't quite as finicky as the other one. And I'm going to show you again what I was talking about, just in case it didn't go through, because I wasn't really watching what was on the screen. I was more or less watching what I was trying to film and thinking about what I wanted to say about my artwork. So I'm going to just switch over here back to camera number one. And I was showing you the guy working 
factory workers. Above that, I was showing you the armament, you know. And then I moved over here and I showed you, you know, exploitation of women. And then over there in the corner, I was showing my anti-nuclear and then pollution, civilization. That is basically all I was trying to show earlier. And then I was showing you as well, I mentioned the judge that holds uh, people's lives in their hands. I'm not sure if this had worked earlier or not. And then I was showing the guillotine that was underneath him right on the corner by my window. And then I was showing above that in the balcony, the capitalists, the military, the aristocrats who are overlooking the working class people, which is on the back of my door. So I did push my door closed a little bit just to show, show these farmers working the fields. And of course, down below here, you can see people working in the mines and these are the people having those shitty jobs and that, that get us all the resources, all the minerals that we need for our technology. So anyways, that is basically what I was showing you earlier. At least with this camera, it kind of worked. And I am going to come back then to over here. And we're actually going to start painting. I don't usually start off my days by ranting like this but anyways it's just because uh, as you know we share everything we do here in the studio together and most of the time this is what like my 88th or 89th stream I mean ever since lockdown we've been streaming every day basically Monday through Fridays and uh, and we've been, the mentality is we share everything that goes on in the studio. That is, if people walk in and say hello, there's noises in the streets. I mean, whatever. This is what goes on in my studio. And this is the whole purpose of this channel is to share everything. So, anyways, and this is why I'm sharing today's kind of a blockage, mental blockage that I have. Because we've been cranking out these paintings like for months now. And uh, I was just kind of with everything going on in the world, just kind of just having doubts. I mean, it's not that I don't have ideas. I'm just wondering if they're worth painting or whatever. Well, I don't know. Anyways, so this is a, another just change of subject to something a little lighter. This is, and I'll come over to here to show this because I love showing what acrylic paints are. It's nothing else than pigment in a polymer emulsion, which gives it this kind of plastic texture. So, and then it leaves you with a very nice and clean palette, which is awesome because that's what we're going to need right now. So where's my faithful knife? Right here. And I'm going to get some white paint. Because that is basically what we are going to do today. Is just do background. Backgrounds in white. And I'm not exactly sure what my frame is going to be. I haven't... Uh, figure out what color that will be. So let's just start off by getting the right texture of our paint. And that's something I'm going to do on camera number one. And we can do that together. I'll just bring this over here where I have a jar of white of a jar of water to work our white paint. We're just going to blend the water and the paint together. I mean, it's obviously not rocket science. 
but we do want to get that nice creamy texture of the paint before we apply it on the canvas. It will make it so much easier. And I guess I need a little more water than that here. And then let's just blend this all together. go. I think it needs just a little more just to blend this in together. I think we're getting very quickly to the texture that I like. At the same time we want to try to keep this as thick as possible so the paint will be as opaque as possible even though we know well we we're not going to put two coats of white because then there's going to be colors on top of that. So, look at that. That looks very nice. Nice and creamy. I don't know if you can tell or not. Maybe if I make it very close like this. Let's see how nice and creamy that is like that. So, now we got that together. Let me pull the camera back up. And we're going to have to figure out what we're going to paint. So I most likely am going to start right, right about in here, I would assume. Okay, just going to step back for a few seconds, take a look at what I want to do. Okay, now, now to paint, one has to be comfortable. You know, if you have to bend over and break your back, uh, whatever you do is not going to work. And where I, where I want to tackle my painting right here, which means I would have to bend like this, bend my knees, bend basically my entire body to be in the area where I'm going to be painting and I'm going to be uncomfortable and that is uh, definitely I'm going to run into trouble. So I'm going to bring out this stool and uh, and actually I'm going to go over here and get a just grab a little pillow because I spilled some water on the stool and I don't want to get my ass all wet and feel uncomfortable as well. So this is just the right height. I'm going to pull this back for a second. Just take a look again at what I'm going to paint because if I can't see it, I can't paint it. Okay. And it's a good thing I did because I would have already started off by doing a boo-boo probably. There we go. I'm just going to, you know, invent and paint some plants and whatever. Just bring this to be a nice colorful painting. And it doesn't have to be perfect since I'm going to be putting some other colors on top of that. There we go.
There's one of these guys I kind of like. I'm going to do another one right here. Very good. Oh, it feels good to paint, I must admit. I have a feeling I haven't painted in weeks. I don't know why. And I'm going to want to do the same thing kind of over here. There we go. And I have no idea what's going on behind me. I wouldn't be surprised if you couldn't see a damn thing. I've been concentrating so much on what I wanted to paint that I kind of forgot about the cameras. So let's do it like this. There we go. All right. Just very quickly putting on another, just another coat so it outlines basically the shape I'm going to want to color later. Like that, maybe. There we go. Let's do the stem now. So how will that go?
Okay, very good. Let me just step back and see what I did. Very good. Okay. I might as well just let's put a little coat of white paint over this wherever the paint kind of spewed on our frame. Who knows, I might end up painting the frame black. But still, it doesn't matter. Let's get this edge as well. There we go. I was thinking of maybe painting the frame yellow. That's why I'm kind of going over everything that could interfere. There we go. Up here too maybe, just a little bit right there. Wherever I spilled over with the green. There we go. That's a nice thing. You can always fix your mistakes. And up here, there, boom, boom, boom. There we go. And there's a little bit right up here. May as well do that as well. Well, this is it. There we go. There you go, little touch ups. Right down this edge here. I don't like doing this very much because I'm using white paint and on the canvas it's gesso, which is white, but not quite the same white. So when I paint over this white with the paint, there is a slight discoloration, a different hue from the white that is. From the gesso. So I try to keep it to a minimal. And ideally, I guess I should whip out the old jar of gesso and use that, but we all know that painters are all lazy. There we go. Okay. Maybe I'll put a second coat later on the worst areas. Okay, so let me just step back here and take a look at where we are at. And that's very good. Very nice. Okay, so I'm going to just continue and just do my little plants and whatever. Things that I just love doing in my paintings. I'm just going to try to have fun, really. I just want to enjoy myself. I should use maybe a bigger brush for this, I'm not sure. But then again, I'm in no rush. So I am going to stick with the same paintbrush. And this is just the background anyway, so. 
whatever color I put on top of this, you can be assured I'm going to have to put two coats on, plus the shading and whatnot. So it's just basically so these colors will be more intense, more vivid. And you know what, I am going to use a different paintbrush just to do the filling in of certain areas. I am impatient. I am, uh, I paint very quickly. And even then, I'm still impatient. So that's the way it goes. I'm also going to uh, make a little more white paint as well because we are going to use quite a bit of white paint to get all these plants and leaves together. So there you go. Let me just wipe off my knife here, keep the materials nice and clean. There we go. Okay. Very good. So, well, like before, I'm going to come over to the other camera and we are going to work this together. I'm going to just get the wider brush so we go a little bit quicker. I'll bring the bar stool back here with the little jar of water. There we go. We can just work this work this together as I switch cameras. Very good. Again, I'm going to look for that nice creamy texture so that the paint glides easily on the canvas. There we go. I think it needs maybe just a little bit more water. And I'm not exactly sure this is going to be the right paintbrush for what we are going to do. Fill in these leaves. Maybe. I'm not sure. I like painting with softer brushes because they don't leave any streaks. They don't leave any paintbrush marks, which usually the second coat covers, granted. But still, if I can avoid them, I will. So I'm going to try this brush. And if I don't feel comfortable with it, well, we'll just switch, right? No big deal. Let me just wipe off my hands here. Uh, not on my hair, if possible. There we go. Okay, let's bring this up here. I'll bring the camera back. We are going to continue with plants up on that upper area. But first, I'm just going to switch back over here for a second. Just wipe my brush clean so I don't. There we go. Okay. So I'll just switch back and forth on my brushes and. So, very good. So, I'm going to continue and I'm going to do the outline. Let me get back to camera number one. There we go.
Yep, this is definitely the lazy man's way of painting. That's cool. There we go, very nice. I'm actually going to step back. I'm going to come back here for a second though and wipe my hands off. Somehow getting paint all over my hands. There we go. And I'm going to go back over here and turn on the fan just so that first coat of paint can dry faster. And I'm going to step back and take a look and see where we're at. Okay, very cool. I'm happy with that. I think I'm going to just go over here. Let's just bring a plant right here. There we go, something like that. And then I can just go and get that fatter brush that will fill in all these outlines. Now you can tell right here that my style of painting is so influenced from the, all those years in the 1990s where I painted on paper and glued those posters, paintings on the street. And the philosophy where I came to maturity was quantity, not quality. The point was to crank out as many of these hand-painted posters to have a good batch in every two weeks to invest an area in the city of Paris or Berlin, Amsterdam, even New York City, and then to go on an afternoon spree of just gluing these posters. And I used to do that with the group of painters I was with called the Zen Copyright. This was in the 1990s, and we were about, I don't know, five, six, seven of us, and we'd just go and invest areas and uh, just have a blast uh, and putting color into the dreary grayness of city streets and I did that for like I actually stopped painting for like over five years just uh, doing posters like that And that kind of uh, forged uh, my uh, way of painting, basically. Now, of course, I, I do paint a lot more details and take my time. Uh, my paintings are a lot more intricate than what they used to be back in those days. But I still have that same... Uh, impatience in my painting that still paint extremely quickly and I do use a symbolic symbolism to get across what I was what I'm feeling which brings me back to the beginning of my rant of earlier of running out and 
asking myself even if it's worth after so many years of pushing values and to realize, uh, you know, I'm an old hippie, you know, I thought we were going to change the world. And uh, unfortunately, it didn't quite go that way, as we all know. I guess it's uh, one step backwards, two steps forward, one step backwards, two step forward, whatever. So let's continue with the painting and not necessarily with the rambling on. So let's get some plants over here. I would love to get a plant like this. Let me see how am I going to do this. Something like this. Yeah, nice. Nice spider plant, whatever. All right, very cool. And then we can do one of these other kind of uh, plants underneath. For that, I am going to get my bar stool. Mine is the bar, unfortunately. Okay, let's bring this guy over here. Where am I on this computer? Okay, I'm with camera number two. That's very good, and that's fine. I'll just bring camera number one a little closer, and then we can do a double, a double uh, exposure type thing. What is it called? Double camera view. So what am I going to do here? I'll put the double camera on, and I'll step back like that. I can take a few seconds to see what I'm going to paint, and then I won't have to worry about the camera. Okay, so I'm going to paint something right in, right in here. Uh, what am I doing here? Okay, this is not quite what I... Hmm, okay. There we go. Yeah, I prefer doing something like that. That's much better. There we go. Okay. Take advantage of putting a second coat here and cleaning off my paintbrush. There we go. Okay, now let's get back to this guy here.
There we go. And I'll just make this light just like that. See what this looks like. All right. I'm just going to make this a little wider right here. So that's what I thought. Okay, it looks like it's just a little shy. And I'll go like that. There. Now, what does this look like? Okay. Okay, very good, very good. Move this out of the way. I will move uh, camera number one back a little bit. As we come back to a view of the whole canvas. Very good. I'm going to just move this over a little bit because I'm going to be tackling some leaves in that upper left-hand corner. I'll just zoom in a little bit like that. There we go. And hopefully I won't be in the way. So I'm going to just, just make sure all my paint is still with the right texture, it looks just right. It looks perfect. Let me just work this a little bit. Yeah, that looks good enough. Very good. Okay, so I'll just step back here again. Okay, I mean, I'm just thinking this out here, trying to foresee a little bit more of what uh, of what I'm going to be doing. Okay, I do see what I'm going to be doing. And in fact, before starting up where I just mentioned, I am going to go and just add a little more of what I call a spider plant right in this area here. Right, right about here. There's no need for me to get too close to here because there's going to be a black border all the way around. There we go. Just like that. Another one like this. All right.
All right, nice. I'm just going to step back for a second. Okay, very good. And let's get this last one in here. There we go. And I'll just okay. I'll pull the camera back and we'll go back to this upper left hand corner like I mentioned. And we'll start adding a few leaves there. I do have to take back. I do have to take a second to think about all this. I am uh, moving faster than it should, so I'm just going to have a little swig of water. Cheers, everybody. Yes, that does taste good. Okay. So, I am taking a look at the painting, but through my computer, it gives me just another angle. And I do like what I see. Okay, if I may say so. I don't know. So, I am going back. So, as I mentioned, in this upper left-hand corner... So why am I hesitating? Why am I hesitating? I don't know. I don't know. Well, let's go for it. Okay. And even though this is going very nicely, I'm going to take a second and take a look at my paintbrushes to see if there isn't one that would do the same job but Hmm, I don't know. Okay. I guess I'll stick with what I have. It is no big deal, I guess. Seems to be working out fine. I'll just shut off that uh, the fan. And let's go back to camera number one. There we go. Okay.
Okay, very, very enjoyable doing, I must say. I just love, love these plants and this movement. That's why I paint them so frequently. Very good. There. What does that give us? That gives us a lot of leaves in that corner. Very good. Okay. And I'm going to bring this camera over here so we can uh, just move in to the other side and we're going to do the same the same thing. Except we're going to make these leaves a little bit smaller. There we go. Just like that. I obviously want to give the impression that these leaves are just randomly there. But of course, they are not. They are all placed so there is a balance to the whole canvas. Just like that. And very quickly, this canvas is getting nice and crowded with plants and leaves and a whole bunch of different colors. By the time we're done with this, And I am going to bring my chair, oops, bring my chair over here to get this lower part. So, very good. So I have to, again, step back and take a little look and see what I want to do here. And that's what I thought. I thought I would like to 
put in one more of these like what I call my spider plants. Maybe right here, a little bit smaller than the others. I'm not going to think about it, just going to go and do it. Just like that. It's not, uh, there you go. It's not just really just going by instinct here. Don't want to bring the brain in, just want to do it by feeling. Something like that. And I think maybe I might need one right here. I'm not going to think about it. I'm not going to get up and go check. I'm just going to do it. Just like that. And one on the other side. Right here. Because I have like a nice little star shape. And then I can go without, again, getting up and thinking about it. I'm just going to tackle a few of these leaves right here, which are always a pleasure to paint. It's just that movement I enjoy with the paintbrush, which is kind of the same movement that I do when I paint my sperms. I paint a lot of sperms in my paintings just because I enjoy the movement of the brush. So there we go. Okay, let's try this. There. And now I'm going to have to get up. Try to figure that one out as well. As always, I'm always afraid of doing just too many. You know, one leaf can screw up the whole thing, at least in my opinion. I'm sure for most people, they wouldn't even notice it. But for me, it is important. So I think I can just put one more here. like that and and I have to get up again can't make those decisions up close Okay, it's not an easy decision. Uh, as you can tell, I am taking my time to think this out. And might as well use up the rest of my paint to put a second coat on where the splattering came down on the canvas. There we go. Just like that. And of course, I'm making a mess. Damn it. There we go.
« Oh putain, c'est pas possible. What am I doing here? Ok, there we go. Jesus. Ok, so, let's just step out. Take a step back. Take a look at the canvas you are at. And we have a jungle. Okay. Well, I'm sure you've noticed, but it does need a few leaves. Just a few in that lower left-hand corner. I'll move the camera over and zoom in on that area right about there. That's where we're going to add our last few leaves. But I am out of white paint, so I'm just going to put a little bit. I'll actually use the paintbrush to do that. There we go. Just a little bit more white paint. I probably am going to put my signature right about here. So I'm going to just put the leaves above that and leave this area blank. But first I'm going to work the paint to get again that right texture so the paint glides on beautifully on the canvas. And I'm just going to do this very quickly here. I'm not going to go back like I did earlier on camera number one. And I'm going to stick with camera number two. This is like the Umbrella Academy. You have number one, number two, and number three over there. And if you haven't seen that series on Netflix, the Umbrella Academy, I would say go see it right now. It is awesome. And the second season is just as good, if not better, than the first. I just thought it was, like, way too short. Never wanted it to end. Okay, this paint looks just about right. So, let me just step back and take a look and see how I'm going to do this. Okay, I am, uh, how am I going to do this again, okay, I'm going to kind of work my way backwards, okay. right, right there, right there, okay, let's switch over back to number one, and I'm going to start off with a lead down here. There we go. And I'm going to start with a leaf right over here. Again, I'm going to leave room for my signature right there, so that should be fine. And then I can just just add a few more leaves right here. There's already a lot of action, so I'm just probably going to do one more leaf. Or two, maybe. Okay, one right here. A little heart leaf. And then one right here. And I think that's will be just enough. And I'm going to stand back and see what that looks like. And honestly, I'll pull the camera back 
see what you think, but I think that is plenty there. I don't think we should add any more. It looks like a pretty good balance. I'll show you on the other camera so you have a different view, another angle, but I think that's fine. When I see a lot of yellow, a lot of purple, magenta, so very good. And all this paint is still quite wet, I must say. I thought it would have dried faster. You can tell that summer is over and that it's fall. So if we were like a few weeks ago, all this would have been completely dry by now. <laughs> I would have liked to put a second coat on these wider plants, but I can do that first thing in the morning tomorrow, and then while the larger plants dry, we can start tackling the smaller, smaller plants. So I have a feeling this is going to be the conclusion of our show for today. I want to thank you once again for joining me. I hope you'll join me uh, tomorrow. We'll be back at uh, 9 a.m. Tomorrow is Thursday, so we will be doing our stream in French. Every Thursdays, we kind of uh, do our stream uh, for my friends here in France where I live. It only seems normal. And then the four other days of the week, we do it for my friends back home in the States which uh, seems normal as well. So uh, like that, everybody's happy. And for me, actually, it doesn't change anything in my way of painting. It just makes me have to remember my, my uh, languages so I don't forget all these words. It's true that uh, when you're bilingual, you just use the first word that pops in your mind. And sometimes it's the wrong language, so you carry in a microsecond have to translate it. Anyways, a lot of fun. <laughs> Anyway, so I'm going to leave you like usual. I'm going to leave you with my schedule. Say hopefully you'll join me tomorrow at 9 a.m. Eastern Time. Until then, I'll say ciao, mes amis.